Hello everyone. Today on the bench we have uh, the famous Commodore 64 coming from uh, 1982. I really don't think we need to um, say more. This is the most popular uh, home micro ever built or at least this is what some say um, with uh, ZX Spectrum to follow. Uh, maybe it's the other way around but um, I got this from eBay um, it, ha it, it has a memory problem I haven't seen this powered up yet and we were going to investigate and probably uh, repair the damage uh, together so let's get on with this okay we can um, I guess immediately spot some stuff like um, this is important the um, big two chip uh, cover which acts like a heat sink is missing my gosh the fuse has uh, foil the fuse is wrapped in foil uh, never do this guys uh, never do this even for test purposes because it might blow or fry the rest of the circuit and um, the rest of the chips uh, including the seed uh, ROMs and the processor we can find leftovers from thermal paste that looks like um, yeah it's it's it has been there for many years so first thing is to replace the fuse and the second thing will be to um, uh, clean up the uh, leftovers uh, of this uh, old thermal paste in the meantime I have powered this up and you can clearly see that uh, there is this one of the classic messages uh, out of memory so there's there must be something wrong with the RAM chips we'll investigate this further in many cases with uh, RAM failure we can conduct several tests um, in order to see uh, how much RAM or how many chips are going bad um, in this case um, I will try, and by the way we're wor working with 25 uh, revision of the motherboard which is very uh, common in this case uh, I'm going to be wor uh, working and testing the machine with clowns, the classic game cartridge the back uh, which gives us um, um, a result which looks weird in the beginning but of course has a logical explanation because the um, game actually starts uh, but I uh, do not rush into joy just yet uh, what we have just approved is that not all the RAM or n not all of the chips are uh, go uh, are bad um, and this uh, happens because th this game requires much less than the 60k available uh, in the machine um, I don't know if it's gonna be 16 or something uh, but uh, it, it is a very light game let me put it this way at the same time we are working with a composite and a TV output just to check that the big chip is working um, and do not uh, worry uh, for not having the heatsink on because now I'm gonna leave it on for two three minutes maximum for the for testing purposes like now and then I'm gonna power it off um, now we have to focus more on in this area where the RAM chips are uh, the RAM chips can be found on the left side of the motherboard and uh, we have to spot which one goes bad probably uh, we might come up um, with findings like two or three and, but um, in most cases it's gonna be one or two which is good uh, right after um, the game cartridge test what I usually do is to um, move to the second test which is going to be the dead cartridge test uh, if, we, if we can have um, a report uh, which uh, will tell us exactly which RAM chip goes bad um, it will be best 
but uh, in any case if we not cannot have this we can identify what is going wrong uh, by the flashing of the screen now with the dead test cartridge plugged in we get five flashes um, yeah five flashes on the screen it's either a report on the screen uh, apparently this machine is not capable of uh, doing uh, so um, and instead the dead dead the cartridge gives us flashes um, to calculate uh, bits uh, in order to see um, probably um, what it, where the, the problem um, can be found um, and this is exactly uh, what we're going to do each bit on every byte is handled by a RAM chip and now we have to see which bit is malfunctioning so we can determine um, which RAM chip is broken then uh, with five flashes I uh, have to check on the matrix um, and I'll get back to you I went over a um, table uh, which indicates that it's going to be probably U11 the chip that fails uh, on the screen we still have the out of memory um, error um, we haven't done anything yet apparently we can see uh, other characters like MJ left parenthesis or the pipe but I'm not really going to um, look um, over again um, the characters over or against the um, the RAM to check uh, which is going wrong but I'll go to sim simply to step 3 and step 3 is the world famous uh, not always successful but very popular piggybacking which means that uh, we have some spare RAM chips um, that we do know um, that uh, will do the job that they are tested and new and we place uh, the um, new uh, RAM chip over uh, on top of the um, uh, one we think in this case U10 and I'm gonna tell you why I picked uh, U10 first um, on top of the uh, uh, one uh, that looks uh, suspicious um, I usually yeah let me power this on and here we go we have um, just found you can see there is still a problem this is not the uh, amount of uh, the RAM we should have but um, we have uh, successfully spotted um, one chip at least one chip that fails and this is U10 and the reason I picked the uh, because the matrix the table indicated 11 that one and uh, I went one before that and what I'm gonna do is to check uh, U11 of course but then the very next one so this is what I do usually what I usually do then I'm gonna place the heatsink over the not this way but the other way around <laughs> um, reverse the case and solder it on the side uh, over the big two chip yeah not this way the other way that's it and um, uh, we can have a working system again so uh, I think it's not gonna be more than three chips and the um, placing of um, placing of the case uh, uh, is an easy task since the VIC-2 is working so um, I think well we're gonna be successful in no time um, I'm going to um, put sockets and I'll be back one other thing I wanted to point out is that um, 
as many times as I try to switch on and off the system the amount of memory that um, comes up is always different and this is because the system is still unstable you can try that to check it on your own now is there anything better than loading a game to celebrate uh, victory and um, a successful repair after all uh, for the record, just for the record, um, I wanted to say that it was indeed um, U9, uh, U10, 11 as well. Um, all socketed now. I guess um, I have to change um, all um, chips in order to be socketed after all but uh, I didn't do uh, this uh, tonight here is one of my favorite games critical mass um, I, I didn't pick this one just for because I like it so much I picked it because it takes so long to um, to get um, loaded um, and uses a uh, full memory so I um, this is going to be uh, um, the ultimate test for the RAM um, chips and uh, the machine uh, so bear with me um, so we can have it uh, loaded uh, not just to play around but uh, to see um, the um, joystick how it's gonna be working and all that um, the controls uh, uh, the keys whatever the the output always at the same time um, onto this uh, character display but also through the RF modulator um, in order to spot uh, anything that uh, uh, can indicate malfunction um, just for the record uh, whenever you piggyback a RAM chip um, the, the one that fails which uh, sits underneath um is acting like a ghost therefore the when you place the other chip on top of that it's gonna be like one uh, working chip at a time there is something i don't like in the instructions given in the beginning um but let's continue uh select skill level uh, okay now uh, going back to uh, the RAM chips um, piggybacking and all that I strongly suggest um, you guys whenever you uh, perform any kind of repair uh, you use uh, sockets uh, for obvious reasons you, know, you can uh, always change um, and test and uh, uh, try uh, several uh, chips over chips and uh, mark them as good or bad uh, whenever you have sockets available so it's a good practice to use sockets at all times um, I'm just fooling around now with the uh, with the game trying to see that everything works um, and another thing I wanted to say is that I am I'm trying to keep um, um, the videos um, um, to the point and um, I'm not doing any um, hours of soldering uh, endless hours of soldering because to me um, it looks and sounds uh, pointless and why is that because everybody does it different uh, in a different way so uh, I'm, I'm trying to um, give some hints and tips I'm trying to learn um, always feel free to write uh, comments and please write comments um, here below you know the drill um, there's a special section always um, highly appreciated any tips um, or ideas so I'm here to learn and uh, to try things 
um, or to uh, share knowledge. Um, so soldering to me um, is something that I do in a in a different way, and everybody does it in a different way. So it's pointless to uh, spend hours of uh, videos showing a guy soldering, and um, yeah, pretty much um, you're gonna do it, and you're gonna do it in your own way. Um, the important thing is to um, to know the steps, uh, how to detect uh, faults, and how what are the best uh, practices um, in order to um, deal with uh, power supplies, RAM issues, um, output uh, composite signals, uh, keyboard failure, tape recorder, um, the change of the belt for example is something that I'm going to show you in a future video and stuff like that so we can always make um, repair repairs um, to the systems uh, we grew up with and to the systems we love and um, yeah thanks for watching um, consider subscribing and uh, I'll catch you in another video shortly